finally here for UMass football. Today, the season begins for the Minutemen in Statesboro, Georgia. And welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Sling TV. We are at Paulson Stadium, where today the Eagles of Georgia Southern host Massachusetts. And alongside former Ohio State Buckeye Dustin Fox, I'm Bill Roth. Welcome you to Statesboro for today's game. You know, it was about a month ago where UMass made the pivot and decided to play this season, but initially everyone's schedule was full. There was no one to play. Well, that has changed here in October, and Dustin, essentially, <laughs> they've become college football's substitute teacher. Oh, come on, Billy. Everyone knows you need a good substitute, and that's exactly what UMass is this afternoon, and it's kind of crazy to think. Going back 10 days, that's all they had to prepare for this game. The coaches got on the phone. They talked multiple times throughout the week. That never happens. These coaches never talk during the week, but they had to get all the logistics down, and they were able to get to this point to play football this afternoon. Well, it's UMass's season opener. Georgia Southern has already played three games this season. They come into this game with a mark of two and one. Each of the three games have been decided in the final minutes of the fourth quarter. In the season opener on this field, the Eagles stopped a late two-point conversion attempt to beat Campbell 27 to 26. In game two, it was a heartbreaking loss. The Raging Cajuns connect on this 53-yard field goal as time expires, and the Eagles lose 20 to 18. Game three looked like another last-second loss, but linebacker Rashad Bird makes a game-saving stop at the one-yard line, preserving the 35-30 victory over Louisiana Monroe. Say they are two and one coming into the game. Yeah, the fans here at Georgia Southern, they have high expectations. You think most fan bases would take two and one and say, all right, that's good, we're on our way in the Sun Belt. Not this fan base, they expect more. In fact, Shy Wartz, their starting quarterback, said this week they're one point away from being 3-0, but also one point away from being 0-3. Well, speaking of words, he is having a tremendous senior season. He's going to be a record-shattering quarterback for Georgia Southern. Yeah, he's so dynamic. What he does for this offense is the triple option, and he runs it so well. He's gotten so much better at that mesh point you see in, in the option attack. And this guy has a chance to do something no one's done at Georgia Southern. He's already passed for over 3,500 yards, and he's rushed for 2,500 yards. Just incredible what this kid can do. He's their entire offense. Massachusetts and Georgia Southern on a picture-perfect day here in Statesboro. The kickoff is straight ahead. Southern and UMass ready to kick things off. Chad Lunsford is in his third full season as the head coach here, the 43-year-old native of Anderson, South Carolina. A proud eagle. Walt Bell's in his second season at UMass. The 36-year-old a former Arkansas State, Maryland, and Florida State offensive coordinator trying to build the UMass program. And he is just so happy to be on the sidelines wearing a headset coaching a game this year because a month ago, uh, Dusty, they didn't think they'd be playing at all. Yeah, nobody thought that UMass was going to play this season, and here they are. You know, they had 17 practices to prepare for this game. Some would say that's maybe not enough. We'll find out this afternoon. Nobody knows what to expect. The depth chart's kind of confusing. A lot of new faces from a season ago, but they're pumped up and they're gonna kick it off here at Statesboro. Season finally underway for UMass, which won the toss and deferred the option to the second half. A fair catch called for by Kennedy. His teammate took it, but it will be a touchback on the fair catch. And we'll get our first look at the Georgia Southern offense. Now, if you're saying, well, why is Georgia Southern wearing white jerseys on its home field? And why is <laughs> UMass wearing the home jerseys? Well, th that's one of those unique things. Remember, it's 2020. <laughs> Everything's kind of crazy and different. They've never worn the home whites here in Statesboro. But guess what? They're doing UMass a favor this afternoon. They had some issues with their uniforms getting their road jerseys in in time because no one really thought they were going to be playing a football game this fall. So Georgia Southern elected to play with its road uniforms on its home field. And Shy Wirtz, the first play. And we'll be seeing a lot of this man today. J.D. King, the first carry of the day. And he has a big hole up the middle and gets ahead to the 42-yard line. He's coming off a career high of 196 yards in his last outing. And this young man from Oklahoma State who transferred in gets things off to a good start. Yeah, he is really kind of ignited this football program after he transferred from Oklahoma State. When we chatted with head coach Lunsford yesterday, he said this guy is infectious. For a, a transfer to come in and just kind of galvanize, galvanize the team, it's pretty remarkable. Well, 
What do they do offensively? What do we call this offense that Wurtz runs so effectively? Well, some would call it a brand of the triple option. We were talking again yesterday with the offensive staff, Bob DeBest, their offensive coordinator. We kind of we figured it out together. We kind of talked through it. He said, you know, it's kind of a gun, pistol option. So we're like, okay. Oh, we call it the GPO. The GPO. So that's what Coach DeBest came up with. He said, we'll yeah. call it the GPO. <laughs> That was Colton Cooperie that made the tackle on Wurtz. He has a big, big day ahead of him. That position there, that Mike linebacker, is so huge against a triple option team. Second and ten, Wurtz to the air. And he completes his first attempt at midfield to Malik Murray, the senior from Duluth, Georgia. They want to try to throw the ball a little bit better. When we visited with the offensive staff, they said, you know, we... We have to be able to throw the ball when we want to, not just when we have to. Yeah, I said, Coach, you, know, you don't throw the ball that much. Last week you had seven attempts. And he says, well, that's not a game plan. I go into every game not worrying about statistics, not worrying about anything like that. All that I care about is winning football games and managing that game based on how the game uh, flows. They're a good team on third down this season. They get a lot of these third and shorts. And King converts to the 47-yard line. Not only is J.D. King one of the more effective running backs in the Sun Belt, the leading rusher on this team, but he's one of the more likable guys. He's the young man that every coach in this league, really on any team, would want to have in his locker room. Again, he's infectious. He's one of the most popular players on the team. And one of the hardest workers, by the way. From the 47 of UMass. Wurtz has a man wide open, and again it is Murray. Sprinting to the end zone, touchdown! Well, when we chatted with the staff this week, you mentioned it. Want to get more involved in the passing game, you're going to see a young freshman safety to Ray Powell, number 21, bite up in that coverage scheme and it's a bust. And of course, you see Malik Murray get behind the defense. That's an easy pitch and catch. Nice touch on the pass from Shy Wartz. And a nice start for the Georgia Southern Eagles. 75 yard touchdown drive has Georgia Southern on the early lead as Wartz throws another touchdown pass. The Eagles jump in the lead early. Talk about eye discipline. Watch the young freshman, number 21, Tarai Powell right here. He comes up, he should have the middle of the field. Instead, he stares in the backfield, he jumps up, there's no help down the seam. And there you see pitch and catch for Malik Murray. During the week, one of the things that the UMass coaches talked an awful lot about was eye discipline and don't get sucked in on that option. And that's what happened on the first play there. Eye control, discipline. Anytime you face a triple option attack, that is vital for a defense. So who do you think we're going to see at quarterback for UMass? I don't know. I don't think UMass fans know who they're going to see. <laughs> That's right. Well, Powell, who was the defensive back on that play, is going to have a chance to redeem himself on this kickoff from near the two or three yard line. And Powell sprints to the near sideline, and he gets to about the 27 yard line. Yeah, the big question over the last couple of weeks in Amherst is, hey, who is our quarterback going to be this year? At least who's going to pull the trigger on the first play of the season and is going to be that young man, Mike Fallon from Milton, Massachusetts. He played just one game last year. Not very experienced. He's only thrown two passes. He's also thrown two completions, by the way. Well, there you go. For 40 yards against Akron last season. And we're going to see him here. The coaches, they kind of weren't sure exactly what they were going to do at the quarterback position. They've got three guys that will most likely play in this game. But the fifth-year senior, I think gives them the most experience from an operational stand standpoint. That's why he will start this ball game. He's a second generation player. His daddy was a quarterback here. And on first down, they run the ball to Ellis Merriweather. He is a newcomer to the UMass program as well. A Georgia native who transferred in from junior college. And they 
think a whole lot about this young man that he'll be really good for him. He's a strong 227 pound back. I, I hope that Georgia Southern's ready for a strong dose of Merriweather this afternoon because in, in chatting with Coach uh, Walt Bell this week, he's going to carry as many times as he can handle in this game. Merriweather gets it again, and he gets thrown down shy of the 21-yard line. Well, I mentioned that Mike Fallon's dad was the quarterback here at UMass way back in the day. There is the former UMass quarterback. He had a big game against Akron way back in the day and another big game against Youngstown State where he threw five touchdowns. Did Daddy? Well, Mike Fallon's going to have to put the ball in the air here on this third and long. I know they want to run the football as much as possible, but he's going to have to make a play on third and nine. Quick throw, and it's caught at the 30-yard line by O.C. Johnson, but he's knocked down right away, and it'll be a quick three and out. And just a quick little, almost like a jailbreak screen. And you watch Johnson come inside, a really well-played reception and tackle by Anthony Wilson, the safety. So many young freshmen starting on this Georgia Southern defense. So many young fr uh, redshirt freshmen, guys that are making their first starts this year. A lot of inexperience, certainly in the back end. That was one thing that kind of concerned Coach Scott Sloan, the defensive coordinator. Pun off the side of the foot of Georgeopolis does not touch a player. It rolls dead near the 40-yard line. It'll be down there. Have you ever seen a punter down his own punt? That's exactly that's what kinda, happened on that play. That's kind of rare. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it was blocked. No, he just mishit it. Just mishit it, yeah. That is just bizarre. We've all done that every now and then off yeah. the long tee, right? <laughs> it's like me in, on a long par five. So Georgeopolis downs his own punt. But the bad news is for this UMass team that gave up over 50 points a game a year ago, already down 7 nothing, and now they've set up shy words in this offense with really good field position on the 39. Wesley Kennedy gets his first touch of the game. Breaks one tackle and slithers to the 34-yard line before he's knocked down by Ruin over there. That's the thing. When you play an option attack, the eye discipline as we talked about with that last touchdown is so vital for the guys in the inside. The safeties and linebackers have to read their keys. Eagles go tempo and a broken tackle again for Kennedy into the secondary and ahead to the 19-yard line. That's a, that's a tough spot to be if you're number 38, Tanner Davis. Watch Davis here with the safety comes up. you got to give him a, a one-way go. Pretty good job getting him on the ground. That's a tough tackle to make. Wirtz on the move and throws it on the run. And it's caught by Hood. And he's ahead to the 13-yard line is Caleb Hood. So a little tempo here now for yeah, Coach Lunsford and his team. And already throwing the football a little bit more in this game testing this UMass secondary. Wurtz throws back to his left, and it's caught inside the 10-yard line near the sticks. That was Anderson that uh, made the tackle on Hood on the play. It'll be first down and goal on the seven. Wart's going to let it go to the end zone, and it is nearly intercepted. That was a really good defensive play over there by the cornerback Josh Wallace from DeMatha High School in suburban this is, D.C. This is well played. Man coverage, you got to get your head back. That's what he does. And he goes up at its highest point and knocks that football down. So many times, defensive backs in those positions, you, you turn your head towards the receiver, and what that does is it allows the official to make a, a pass interference call, but you get your head turned around right there, which is what uh, Wallace did. Well played. You think they're playing fast only to keep them off their heels at this point? They can't sub. They can't do anything defensively personnel-wise. I think they want to see their conditioning. It's a team that hasn't played a game yet. There's a good job up front. Kennedy got the carry and got stopped near the line of scrimmage. I also think, uh, Billy, that they want to 
test this UMass defense. They don't really know what they're going to run. Like coming into the game, they didn't know what base personnel groupings they're going to run defensively. You know, were they going to line up at a 3-4 or a 4-3? They just didn't know. New defensive coordinator this season, so they're going to find out and make a lot of adjustments, I'm imagining, as we go throughout this ball game. Third and goal on the seven now for the Eagles. Words to the air again, looking for his second touchdown of the game, and he's got it. Beautifully done to the tight end, Bo Johnson. I said to Bob DeBest, the offensive coordinator of the Eagles yesterday afternoon, how much do you use your tight ends? He says they need to be involved a lot more. And here he is, Bo Johnson. I wrote it down in my notes. Coach said, got to be involved. First quarter, touchdown throw from Shy Wirtz to Bo Johnson. And that was all set up by eye control again, uh, Bill. When you look at it's a little like why hide. They block down, they just sneak him out the backside. Rainer adds the extra point, and Georgia Southern has put two quick touchdowns on the board here in this first quarter. Shy Wirtz in the air. Two throws, two scores. ESPN College Football is presented by Sling TV, the smart choice for live TV, and in part by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Retro freshman tight end Bo Johnson with the touchdown reception and then the touchdown celebration with the guitar. What kind of music do you think he's playing, Dusty? Uh, they like a little bit of country music down here in the South, don't they? I, they do. I, I know they like a little Cole Swindell, one of my favorite country artists, who's a uh, alumnus, of course, and a big Georgia Southern fan. And we know Cole's probably watching today. In fact, we know he's watching because he tweeted out this morning, game day, let's go. G-A-T-A, -A, we all know what that means, and he's pumped. He's 14 ch he's nothing it. the score already, <laughs> and let's see if UMass and Powell can get the momentum turned around just a little bit on the kickoff return. This is his second chance, and he was brought down near the 10. The ball is on the field, but they're claiming he was already down when it popped free. That would have been a disastrous turn of events for UMass. Well, this is not the start they wanted, but at least now they know what they're in for here today, don't they? Well, they're in for uh, a long day, as it appears so far. I think this is important, though. This drive right here for UMass, they need to get some first downs. They're going to let their defense rest for a little bit. I'm sure the conditioning is a big factor for a team that really hasn't played any live football. All they've had is one live scrimmage in this fall camp of 17 practices. So I'm sure there's some heavy breathing on the sidelines. Hopefully their offense will see if they can get them a first down or two. Fallon to the air. And he's got a receiver open, and that'll be Emelis with the reception. Junior wide receiver from Montreal. You mentioned they've only had 17 practices, and that's in 21 days. They thought they'd have a lot more time to install different parts of their offense, their special teams, but all of a sudden, they find out 10 days ago they've got a game. And yeah, they have to scale back. I mean, they, they were in line to basically start their season around Halloween, right, the end of October, which is a couple more weeks. So they had to scale everything back and prepare for this game in just 10 days, as you mentioned, Bill. Here is Merriweather trying to get an open space, and he gets ahead of about the 26-yard line. Harris brought him down. Merriweather is going to be the key guy on the ground this year for UMass, regardless of how many games the Minutemen play and regardless of who the quarterback is. And certainly in a year like this where you don't know how many games you're going to get, they anticipate they'll have some more. Um, they're in talks with some other schools. They don't have anything lined up officially yet. But in a short season like this, you basically just want to play sound football. I don't want to say vanilla football, but you haven't had a lot of time to put a lot of things in. There's a lot of new faces on this offense. They're going to give the ball to him again, and he gets ahead for about a yard on the play. To show you how important he is and how popular he is, a junior college transfer comes in. He was voted one of the five team captains on this UMass team before he ever played a game. Well, you look at a player like Merriweather, and I, and I was talking with the staff with you, Billy. He's got an NFL-type body for running back. He's the fastest player on the team. 
He'll touch the football as many times as possible. He can catch it out of the backfield. He's got really good hands. But the thing they love is his just ability to bruise, grounded pound. And now that their offensive line is kind of beefed up this, uh, this offseason, that's going to help their running attack. Passing situation now, though, for Mike Fallon. Nope, they keep it on the ground. And it's defended well. Roberson had nowhere to go. The receiver taking the handoff. And UMass will punt it away once more. Well, now that he had his breakfast ball off the tee, he gets to come out here for his, his next punt. Let's see if he can get a better one in the air, a little more hang time, a little more distance. George, George Paul, uh, Georgeopolis, excuse me. He is from Greenville, South Carolina. And they'll be kicking it away to Wesley Kennedy, the return man. That's better. Hey, great effort on the second one. Kennedy takes the fair catch on the 35. We'll step aside. When we come back, Shy Wirtz, Georgia Southern, back on offense. Papa John's. Day here in Statesboro, Georgia, and the hometown Eagles, who've won 25 straight non-conference home games. Off to a quick start here. They lead 14-0. Let's take a look at this week's rankings. They're brought to you by AT&T 5G. Clemson, oh, biggest win in ACC history among conference teams today over Georgia Tech. Tonight, ooh, what a game that should be, huh? Uh, big one, and we know Nick Saban's going to be coaching in that one as well, so that's going to be a fun one. Top offense in the country versus the top defense in the country. Georgia Southern's had the ball twice and his score twice thanks to this guy. Wirtz got his first hit of the day. The ball is free, but they're going to say he's down, and that's the first time that UMass really was able to get a shot on him in there. That was uh, McCultry that made the play along with Powell. Yeah, Powell's the one that comes in late and delivers the blow. And this kid, I'm telling you, we, we chatted with the staff, and they're, they're so high on Teray Powell, excuse me, this young freshman safety was beat on the first touchdown, but boy, he can run that alley. He can run and hit. Here's a new formation. The quadruple eye. The quadruple eye for them. They'll shift out of that. Wirtz on the option. The beautiful late pitch. That was magnificent as he was going down. He's able to flip the ball to Wesley Kennedy. That is Fabulous pitch. Just clinic quality. Watch, he's going to fake the handoff up the middle there to Kennedy. Comes out. He's got now lead blockers down the field. And the late pitch at the end to Wesley Kennedy. Beautiful, beautiful play. You see right there, Jarrell Johnson, 22. He's caught between a rock and a hard place because he sees the quarterback coming at him, uh, Shy Watts. Or Shai Wirtz, excuse me, has nothing to do. He's got how nowhere to the, go. How in the world do you defend that? He's pitched the ball on his way down. <laughs> you need an extra body to get out there to play the edge. They're at the 41-yard line already. Now they run it, and he pitches it with his left hand. He can pitch it with either hand, and it's a big run for King. Inside the 30-yard line, ahead of the 26-yard line for J.D. King. You know what they're doing? You, you mentioned this, the quick up-tempo, but... The back-to-back -back plays, right? They go to the right, all the way, sideline to sideline, force the defense to run. They get them a little bit tired. Then you, what do you do? You come back. You go all the way to the left side and make them run across field. They're just trying to wear out this UMass defense early in this ballgame. Well, remember what they told us, that, that Georgia Southern doesn't run a whole lot of different plays. It's just a lot of window dressing. It just looks like a bunch of different plays. That's a little shovel pass to Darius Lewis. And he's got another first down ahead of the 18-yard line. First touch of the day for the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, Lewis. You know, it's funny as he delivers the shovel pass, Shywurst does a great job of carrying out his fake, so he delivers the pass. And not a lot of people on the UMass you know, defensive front could see it. He goes back like he's dropping back. He's doing a great job. We're going to keep an eye on this stat today. Explosive plays. They want runs of 12 or more yards. They want passes of 15 or more yards, and their goal is eight per game. They're already at six. That's a good start. Here in the first quarter, from the 16-yard line, 
They string that out, and that's defended absolutely perfectly. That time, Powell came up and made the play. A lot of folks will tell you that that young man is the best player on the UMass football team. He comes from a great high school program, uh, St. Joseph's uh, in New Jersey. He's going to be a brilliant player over the next few years in Amherst. I would say it's pretty remarkable that a true freshman who's never played a snap of college football could be your best player. And I asked Walt Bell that very question, and he said, Basically, dude, this dude is legit. He is that good. He's fast. He's got football savvy. Football IQ comes, as you mentioned, from a great high school program. He's going to be a good one. Look at Wirtz. Look at those feet. Although the ball is on the ground, and it is a loose football. And the Minutemen come up with it, a rare Georgia Southern turnover. Wirtz was a magician with his feet. But they he lost it. the ball, and it was recovered by Ross. And you see Wirtz coming off the field, tapping his chest. My bad, my bad. He knows that's on him. One of the things they pride themselves here at Georgia Southern is ball security. They work on it every single day. This is one of the greatest teams in terms of turning the football over or not turning the football over over the last three seasons. In fact, Bill, the last 26 games, only 20 turn turnovers. So that's a, that's a surprise. They've had a great tradition here of holding on to the ball. In fact, no team has turned it over less frequently yeah. over the last four seasons in college football than Georgia Southern. So UMass will take over on its own four-yard line. Not a lot of running room inside there for Merriweather. Let's go to the studio, and here's Kevin. And Bill, this studio update brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Unbeaten number four, Notre Dame has its hands full with one and three, Louisville. Malik Cunningham to Marshawn Ford. Cardinals just recovered an onside kick, 7-6. Louisville leading in the third, Bill. Here we're in the final minute of the opening quarter. It has been all Eagles so far. They're up 14-0 on their home field here in a game that wasn't scheduled till 10 days ago. Oh, and Merriweather gets driven back into the end zone. They'll give him forward progress to the two-yard line. And it's going to bring up a third and very long. That was Jalen Jackson coming in to make the stick. Yeah, take a look at this. Jalen Jackson right there in the middle. And Todd Bradley as well. You know, Jackson's getting his first start. Got a lot of guys, young players, playing there for the first time this season. And right now they're just kind of pinning their ears back on this UMass offense that just really has has no answers for this defensive front uh, for the Eagles. And now a timeout in the final seconds, just seven seconds to go. And the officials stop the clock. They're going to take a look for targeting. Interesting. Which on could the be, previous hit. Which could be a big play because you're looking at a third and 12, and a targeting penalty would be an automatic first down in 15 yards. Now, we do know the rules for targeting in this season. They changed them a couple years ago. But now they're either going to confirm the call. Take a look here. Let's see where it's at. Right there. It would be on number 11, Todd Bradley, as he comes in first on Merriweather, kind of drops the, the crown of his helmet, and that's that's an indicator for targeting. So they're going to take a look at that and either confirm it or play on. It was initiated by the booth, and they have the opportunity to take a very close look at that. While they look at that, let's talk about what's coming up next Saturday in college football. Seven thirty Eastern. Saturday night football. Look who's back, big guy. What league is that? I Old think, Dusty, my I think, Ohio I think State the, Buckeye buddy. The Big Ten is coming back next weekend. 
Michigan and Minnesota, and that is a big game in prime time. ABC 730 Eastern time. That is a huge game for Michigan. Uh, and not an easy opener by any well, stretch of the imagination a in a season game. that is so big for Coach Harbaugh and Michigan. It's a huge game for Minnesota as well. Is, is there a team that's projected to compete for that West Division? And Minis- or Min- Michigan, excuse me, they've got a lot of questions to answer, but they've got a really, they got a great defense coming back. The Wolverines do. After video review, personal foul, targeting with the crown of the helmet, defense number 11. 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. Number 11 is disqualified from the contest. Please reset the game clock to 44 seconds. 44 seconds on the game clock, please. So for Todd Bradley, his day is over. And as you see it, good call? I think it was the right call as he, he lowered his crown of his helmet. Now, remember... They changed the rule this year. There's no longer the walk of shame where the player who's disqualified has to walk off with the trainer. You take a look at this. Watch his head. He drops it. I I think it's the right call. Some would say that's football and you play on, but they've got the rule in there for a reason. You've got to come in. You've got to try to keep that head up and wrap up. So Bradley can stay on the sideline with his teammates and support his guys. He doesn't have to go to the locker room like he used to uh, in seasons past, which I like that rule a lot. So that moves the ball out to the 17-yard line, and it gives UMass a first down. Allen was thinking about taking a deep shot, but everyone he's covered. And the young man making his first start is going to get his first sack of his career. Back to the 12-yard line as Raymond Johnson came in to bring him down. Yeah, there's only so much time. You can run around if you're Fallon. You're looking downfield. Everybody is just smothered by the secondary of the Eagles. And, and you look at, at that front with Springer, Wright, and Johnson. You, you just can't get away for that much time. I mean, it's only so much you can do. Well, that's a fast quarter. It was. So the sack by Jalen Jackson finishes off quarter number one. An opening period that was dominated by Georgia Southern. These Eagles have won 25 in a row non-league games at home, and they lead by two scores after one quarter today. ESPN College Football presented by Sling TV. We go to quarter number two here at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, where these Georgia Southern Eagles, thanks to quarterback Shy Wirtz, who's thrown two touchdown passes, have the lead. Bill Roth, Dustin Fox with you on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It's about 70 degrees here today. Perfect fall afternoon here in coastal Georgia. Quarterback. It is. It is Josiah Johnson, his first snap. And Johnson gets tripped up. But right, he gets ahead to about the 18-yard line. Maybe this uh, decision of the coach to get Johnson involved in this offense. He, he's one of the most athletic guys in the team, as you see Kind of been a bugaboo for Massachusetts in the first quarter. Outscored 157 to 65. And another 14 added on to that today, 14 0. But back to Johnson. He's a former tight end. Played tight end last year. In fact, caught a pass from Fallon last year. So he's going to play a little bit of quarterback, a little bit of inline tight end, a little bit of H back all over the field. It's about third down and eight now as Fallon returns at quarterback. And Merriweather gets ahead to the 20-yard line. A pickup of a yard for Merriweather, who's playing in his first game for UMass. Well, they got out of the goal line area thanks to the targeting penalty. And that'll give a little bit more room for their punter. But Georgia Southern's defense, very strong here in this first half. I think they've only given up one first down in the entire first half so far, this Georgia Southern defense. And then another one on a penalty. I think they're just trying to gather themselves, UMass that is. Kind of settle into this ball game, see if they can get a stop. They got a turnover, that was great for their defense. See if they can get a punt here, get some field position, and put your defense out there with a chance. Before the snap to Georgeopolis, a flag is thrown and Delay of game. it took too much time. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. I think they're just trying to extend this game as long as possible and give, <laughs> seriously give their defense a rest on the sidelines. So they're u- literally using every single second of that play clock 
to give themselves, buy themselves some time, get the fluids going. They've been out there a lot this afternoon. So Georgeopolis will be kicking from his goal line. They were very concerned about kick coverage. Kennedy is a dangerous return man. He will not get his hands on this one as it goes out of bounds. Well, we've been waiting all year for this lightweight unification bout. You know, it was postponed twice by the pandemic, but this should be an instant classic. Lomachenko takes on IBF champ Lopez tonight in Las Vegas. It is a 12-round main event. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the app. That's tonight at 10 Eastern. All right, so here comes Shy Wirtz after that last turnover. He knows it was on him. Typically doesn't turn the football over. No one does, by the way, at Georgia Southern. See if he can redeem himself with his drive. Wirtz the throw from midfield. Nicely delivered. That'll be enough for the first down to Emil Smith. Boy, that is something that... We talked with Bob DeBest, the OC for Georgia Southern, said poise in the pocket to take a look at the outside route. Just a little stutter. It pushes off the corner. Wallace there to create that separation in zone coverage. But the poise of Shy Wirtz is something that he needs to improve on, and he has throughout camp, throughout these first couple of games. You don't get to 2 and one winning all these close games if you don't got poise from the quarterback position. Quick pitch with the right hand. This is the first carry of the day for speedy Matt LaRoche, and he powers his way. He showed more than just speed there, didn't he, inside the 25. They don't call him speedy for nothing. <laughs> Boy, have you seen somebody stick their foot in the ground like this and just cut back? Watch the speed. As he gets on the edge, he's going to stick his right foot in the ground right there. Pow. Yeah, you get, get vertical right after that. He does. Gets him an extra seven, eight yards. That is agility. Cuts right back inside. Beautiful by LaRoche. And, and showed some power at the end. Ahead to the 24-yard line. Another explosive play. Boy, they've been picking up some big yardage plays, haven't they? They have. Talked about those explosive ones coming into this game. They were trying to get eight in a game. Nearly there already through the first half. Logan Wright got a couple. The junior from Jacksonville. Georgia Southern fans are happy with the record, but they they know they've had three games that have been decided by one play at the end of the fourth quarter each week. Yeah, they could be 3-0, but they could be 0-3. They just want to Easily. see them play better. This is the best Georgia Southern has played all year. Yeah, they, they beat a 1-AA Campbell by one point on a late two-point conversion that was failed. Wirtz fakes the pitch. And he's dragged down near the 19-yard line. He got about three yards on the play. I thought it was a good job by Logan to make the play defensively for UMass. Well, you got to think that the experience of UMass having faced Army a season ago probably helped them in their preparation. Should they put on some of that film again? And a lot of these young players on this UMass defense played in that game. Now it's a little bit of a different type of offense, triple option attack, because they're going to go out of the pistol and the gun as opposed to Army takes everything pretty much from under center. But still, the principles and the eye control, all of that remains the same. They didn't do a very good job against Army, though, defensively. It's a much different UMass team, though. And they beefed up their defensive line. All these guys now over 300 pounds. On the move, Logan Wright turns the corner. Part of his jersey ripped away, but he's got the first down near the five-yard line. Did I be, see a piece of white jersey being ripped off of him? I think it might have been a towel. Maybe that's what it was. Something got pulled Something away got from him. Something got pulled off. I think it's a piece of his T-shirt underneath there. Grabs it. Is that one of those, like, cutaways like they had back in the, the 80s? <laughs> the jerseys would rip off the back? Yeah. There's a little bit of his undershirt there. Not enough. And uh, well played by Shy Wirtz. First and goal on the five-yard line. They have been an excellent red zone team over the last few years. This year they have struggled a bit. They want to score more in the red zone. Let's see what happens on this occasion. And Wirtz gets dragged down on the first down play.
This is just a blitz. Right there, you see, I think it's maybe on P. Comes in there, 87, just kind of shoots his gun. The converted tight end. Yeah. Avian P making the play. Yeah, he played tight end and fullback for 2016, 17, 18. Didn't play last year. He was banged up. And Second and goal. Here. Wirtz throws it, and he's got his man wide open, and it is his third touchdown of the game. Bo Johnson wide open. just comes out the backside and there's nobody in coverage. They're, they're all staring in the backfield and all this, as we talked about, window dressing kind of creates some confusion for the guys in the secondary and linebackers. They're all kind of staring at Shy Wirtz like they're watching a, a, Houdini, like a Houdini trick or something. It's all like illusion and they don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, out of the backside, Bo Johnson comes on that deep crossing route and beautiful touch by Shy Wirtz to Kind of drop it over the linebacker's head, right in the bucket. For his second touchdown of the day. Third touchdown of the day, excuse me. He's, it's funny. Talk to him about throwing the football. Do you, do you want to throw it? He says, we'll do it game by game. Guess what? They're throwing it today. Papa John. Back in Statesboro, Georgia Southern off to a great start here on this Saturday afternoon, leading UMass 21-0. They thought they would be playing their big rival this week, Appalachian State. The game was postponed. They're going to play it later in December. And so they were able to, at the last minute, schedule UMass. And the Eagles off to a hot start today, obviously. Here is the kick return for UMass. This is O.C. Johnson, head to about the 18-yard line. Now let's go to the studio. Once again, here's Kevin. And Bill, this studio update is brought to you by AT&T 5G. We showed you Louisville taking a 7-6 lead on Notre Dame, but the Irish have answered. Ian Book, 13-yard touchdown run, part of an eight-play 66-yard drive. He's able to squeeze across the goal line, make it a 12-7 Notre Dame lead. And number 11, Texas A&M, is on the board in Starkville. Isaiah Spiller from three yards out. The Aggies blocked the punt. Spiller scored again. It's 14-0 over on ESPN. Bill? Here in the second quarter. All right, Kevin, thanks. Here, UMass fans want to see something positive happen. Let's see if Ellis Merriweather can make that happen. And his debut, he gets about a half a yard on that play, and that is it. Really one of the stories here is how well Georgia Southern's defensive front has played against a very big UMass offensive line. They're very big. They're just inexperienced, and they put on some weight. They've got new quarterbacks kind of shuffling in. They've got new running backs. They've got Merriweather out there, but they've still only been able to get 19 yards on the ground in this game. UMass wants to be a powerful, physical, offensive team that can move people off the line of scrimmage. That's what Coach Bell would like to build. There's a play fake for Mike Fallon. He's got some room to run, doesn't he? And he spins ahead for about an eight-yard gain ahead to the 27-yard line. He said, I would love to be what Wisconsin is. I'd love to be what Iowa is. In fact, I'd like to be what the Tennessee Titans are in they, the NFL. They are. What's funny is they, they really, you look at their offensive line, they're bigger than the Tennessee Titans. Now, clearly, not as talented. They're not in the NFL. They're at UMass. Maybe one day some of these guys will get to the, the next level. But they're kind of getting these big-bodied players into their program. They talk about recruiting. There's so many big players up in Maine and Massachusetts and all these opportunities to get these guys in there, and that's their goal. They want to be, as you said, Iowa or Wisconsin. Their strength coach, really talented young uh, coach, Matt Shadid, helped these guys get a lot bigger and stronger, but they're having a tough time today creating anything inside for Merriweather, as you saw again. And that time, uh, Kitchen came in and uh, Hosue to make the play defensively. Boy, they, they're just putting their defense in a tough spot. Every time they're going three and out, they're not allowing any sort of rest on that sideline for their defensive unit. A 
Another punting opportunity for George Georgiopoulos. High but short. And Georgia Southern, which has enjoyed just about everything today, will enjoy good field position again. Eagles get the ball when we return to Statesboro. They run the gun pistol option. So many different ways they can beat you. They can beat you up the middle, the midline. They can fake the handoff. They can hit you over the top. Beautiful throws by Shy Wartz in this offense. And then they can hit you on the outside. Get you speed and beautiful pitches by Wurtz. And then again, they get you going misdirection, come out the backside. Eye control so vital for defenses. And Georgia Southern taking advantage of it. And as a result, Wurtz today in that offense are averaging over 10 yards per play. And on the other side, UMass averaging 1.7 yards per play. Hence the score. Well, they've had great drive starts as well. They're starting on average on their own 43-yard line. As a result, they've had great field position all day long. And Coach Bell hopes his defense can come up with a stop. They did get one turnover already in yeah. this game. From the 40, here's the option to the left side. And Wirtz lowered his shoulder. That was a collision near the 49-yard line. Yeah, that was a big-time hit coming in here. This guy kind of gets blocked into him. He does. It's Noah Boykin. Noah Boykin. Yeah, the transfer from Notre Dame is getting blocked in there at the end. That's Dexter Carter, the wide receiver, blocking Boykin. And Wirtz kind of takes the brunt of it. Boykin's a interesting story, too. It was a high recruit out of high school there in D.C. and really never saw the field at Notre Dame. And in fact, he had an offer to come play for Coach, uh, Coach Bell out of high school and decided to go with the Fighting Irish. A procedure penalty, a false start on Georgia Southern. Number 72. It's 2020. What do you expect? So an opportunity for Words to throw the ball. He's been dynamite putting yeah. it up today. He's, what, eight of nine passing when you're an opposing defensive coordinator. The last thing you want to see is Shy Words get experienced and comfortable throwing the ball deep downfield or even intermediate routes like he has today. Yeah, last week he, the last game, I should say, three for seven. And that was it. I mean, they've already thrown well more than that in the first half alone. Wirtz kept that play alive. Wirtz cuts back. Wirtz on the move, and that is vintage number one here at Georgia Southern. That play right there shows you why he'll go down as one of the greatest players ever to wear blue and gold at this school. Just look at this athletic ability. Breaks a tackle, and then he decides to cut up field. Bursts north and south, and then just kind of finishes the run. Nearly gets tripped up. What a great athlete. Shy Wurtz is so explosive, and we speaking of explosive, we talk about the plays. Wanted to get eight today. They've already got nine. Coach DeBest should be very happy with that one. With the left hand, the pitch to J.D. King. And he gets dragged down, but it's another positive play as we come down to the final five minutes of this second quarter. Boy, they've got so many different options in the backfield between Wright, Roche Kennedy, and of course their bell cow, J.D. King, who's going to get the majority of the carries, but they all really complement each other extremely well. You know, Wright's the bigger body tailback. Wright is more of the traditional north and south runner. You got the, the two guys, LaRoche and Kennedy, are the speed guys. And you get those players on the edge that can really create some challenges for a defense. UMass is going to call its first timeout. It's a smart call. With 4.06 to play. We'll step aside as well. Catch your breath, Minutemen defenders. Back after this. Papa John.
Football Falls Saturday in Statesboro. Georgia Southern leads here 21-0. Our Monday night football matchup, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, and the Cardinals in Dallas take on the NFC East leading Cowboys, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. All begins with Monday night countdown at 6. No dust that the Cardinals have won four of the last five meetings with Dallas. Looking forward to see Andy Dalton take over that Cowboys offense. Ball's on the 18 for Wirtz. They've been living in the red zone. And J.D. King struggles for the first down. See, there's a perfect example of the stick-to-itiveness of that senior. Boy, he is, you look at his just powerful legs when he drives as you'll see several UMass defenders try to get him on the ground. Boy, he is just really strong. Great lower body strength. He'll have a chance, I believe, to play at the next level. 13 first downs to just two for the Miniman. Wirtz hands it off on first down. And it's a nine yard run for Wesley Kennedy, who grew up just about 45 minutes away from here in suburban Savannah. He got nine on that play. Now spotted on the five, second down and one. Remember, Wirtz has already tied a career high with three touchdown passes today. Here is King. He's got the first down, and he's ahead inside the three to the two-yard line. They're just grounding and pounding this UMass defensive front. And by the end of this game, I'm sure that a lot of those UMass players are going to be pretty sore. First game in a long time since, what, November 23rd of last season? It's a long time to go without playing a live football game. I'm not talking about a scrimmage. I'm talking about a game where you've got to be on the field for 11 play drives and then go out and come back out again for 11 play drive. Here is King trying to find a hole, but the Minutemen are there. Nothing doing for J.D. King. Billy Wooden. There's a perfect example of a guy that's put on a lot of weight, number 42 in maroon. You know, he was, what, 260 last year? He's up to 310 in there. Put on, what, 50 pounds this offseason? He started five games last year, got a little bit of experience. But what you want out of a big defensive tackle, you want him to take up gaps. You want him to take up bodies. And that's exactly what he did right there as they create the loss. From the five, second down for Wirtz and Georgia Southern. Wirtz sprints towards the corner and leaps in for the touchdown. He is orchestrating this offense beautifully today and a little hop into the end zone. Does the little layup there. Again, you get the misdirection. Everyone's blocking down to the right side. He spins out. It's a naked bootleg is really what it is. And he's got an option to pass. And the linebacker in that play turns around and tries to plaster. Excuse me, the safety was Tanner Davis, 38. And he, as he plasters his wide receiver, turns his back to the quarterback. Shy Wirtz sees that and says, I'm just going to run it. And it was an easy touchdown right to the corner of the end zone for Shy Wirtz. He's now attributed for all four touchdowns that he thrown th three through the air. And now this one. Shy Wirtz playing a little music on the sidelines. Get the guitar out. Having a lot of fun in Statesboro. Okay. Highlight day for that young man. Shy Wirtz has thrown for three touchdowns. He has run for a fourth. Complete control of this game in the first half for Georgia Southern wearing its road jerseys on its home field. They lead 28-0 late in the second. And the kick coming back now to UMass. That is Roberson. He'll be fighting the sun to field this kickoff. The final few minutes of this first half. And he'll field it from the one-yard line. And Roberson has room. And he's ahead of the 37-yard line. That might be the biggest play of the day for UMass. Well, what's coming up at halftime? Let's go to the studio. Once again, here's Kevin.
Indeed, Bill, coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report, we'll have an update on the status of Nick Saban in advance of the big one, Georgia, Alabama, and Tuscaloosa tonight. Wait till you hear what Coach Jim Mora has to say about Trevor Lawrence after his performance today. And, of course, we'll have more on Notre Dame going down to the wire against Louisville and South Bend, all coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report. Bill? All right, Kevin, final 91 seconds here of this first half in Statesboro. Fallon to put it to the air. And they try to set up the little screen to Merriweather. And he gets ahead to about the 41-yard line. We think the strategy is here now for UMass. I think get to halftime, regroup, hydrate, and try to come out in the second half and tell your players at halftime that uh, it's a 0-0 game and you try to win the second half. Well, they do have two timeouts left. The kick return may have given them a little bit of a spark. Let's see what happens on second and six. Fallon gets out of trouble, and he has some room. He'll have the first down, and Fallon making his first start ahead to the 40-yard line. And that'll stop the clock as he's out of bounds on the 38-yard line. I think that now changes the philosophy. You were, in my mind, just trying to get to halftime. Now you got yourself in a position to maybe go down here and get some points before half. I know they don't have a a great kicker, but once they get inside the distance of about 42 yards, that's about where they feel confident they could make an attempt. You know, Fallon's looked pretty good. He, yeah. He's completed all three of his pass attempts. He's not turned the ball over. Right? And they've got good heat on him. He's gotten out of there and hurt him with his legs here in this first half a little bit. From the 38, they set up another delayed screen or a crossing route. It's dropped by Melvin Hill. Hell, Hill had a little bit of green grass in front of him. He's running that little crosser route at about two yards. Now, Fallon had some pressure on him. Had he been able to deliver that in front of his target, I think Hill could have turned up field and maybe picked up a first down. Merriweather tries to turn the corner, and he got ahead for about a yard. And a timeout taken now with 39 seconds left. So many newcomers. Merriweather, this is his first game. It's going to take a while for this UMass team, and they hope to play more games. Officially, this is the only game on the schedule at the moment. At the moment, yeah. They've talked with other programs, and they're trying to line some things up. They think they will, as you talked about in the open, had some fun with that, kind of said they're the substitute teacher. And there's going to be more of this. We had so we had six postponements this past weekend, today, I should say, uh, in this past week. We're going to have more of these issues, I'm guessing, as we go throughout the rest of college football season and the Pac-12 comes back, the Mountain West, the Mid-American Conference, the Big Ten next weekend as well. And they're kind of waiting around like, hey, we're over here. You need somebody. If you need a game, ten days we'll be there. The UMass hotline is open. It's open. Their AD is willing to, to listen, and you know they're they're um, they're just excited to be playing ball. Look, they've done everything right throughout COVID nineteen. They have been very serious. They've been great with the testing. They've earned the right by taking this very seriously to get a chance to play these games. So the players and coaches. They push for this. They, they wanted they, to they play so this. badly. Oh my goodness! Kids. And they're the only ones on campus. You know, there's not, there are no walk-ons on this team no. this year because there's no students other than the football team on campus right no. now, other than athletes. And thus, these kids have been all by themselves in a bubble of sorts in Amherst. Third down and nine. A deep shot. Incomplete. You got to punt this. He wanted a flag. See Fallon. Felt there was a little bit of contact down the field. Billy, they're going to leave their offense out here to try and take one more shot. Which, if they don't get, leaves Georgia Southern a chance to go down and maybe kick a field goal. From the 37, it's fourth down and nine. That's Edwards, the tight end, going in motion. They bring some heat on Fallon. He's able to deliver the ball right on the money, and that should be enough for the first down to Emelis. Boy, that was right at the sticks. He nearly gets past the line. He does. 
in fact, and you know, he sits down. Great job by Fallon. Now they're going to go hurry up. They've got to with only one timeout. Receiver got pushed out of bounds. No Boy. flag. <laughs> that looked like pass interference if I've ever seen it. Uh, yes. Kitchen clearly knocked him out of bounds as the ball was in the air. Maybe they're claiming uncatchable. Well, or, or was the ball not in the air at the time? Because you can, it's not the NFL where you have illegal contact. You can push a guy down the field. Minutemen have one timeout remaining, trailing by 28. This has been a good drive for them. It started with a good kickoff return. Fallon has hurt Georgia Southern with his legs, and he's thrown the ball well. A pump fake, and he's got a man open if he can find him. Just let nope. him take out, take it out of bounds. And he does. Yeah. When he looks at the tape, he'll see that he had Turner open, but again, it's easier to see from us up here. Right, and I would say this. This is the first drive where this offense actually looks like they're somewhat in sync. Maybe it's because they're going a little bit more up-tempo. Remember we talked about the play clock and how they were just trying to you know, buy themselves some time, get their defense some rest. Maybe they need to put a little more, more pressure on Georgia Southern. And as we approach halftime, as they attempt this field goal, maybe there's a little something here that Coach Walt can talk to his guys about and come out in the second half and play better football. So Cameron Carson, who's a redshirt freshman kicker from Loudoun County, Virginia, Leesburg, Virginia, near D.C., and a former Maine Black Bear is in. He's going to try a field goal, but first the timeout for the long-haired freshman from Leesburg. Think he's nervous? For your first career kick? I think he's probably excited, right? Probably a little bit of both. Do you recall your very first game as a Buckeye when you were yeah. on the field for the first time? Anxiety, yeah, nervous, how do you feel? Uh, I wanted to vomit. I was very nervous. I was I was a true freshman. We were playing the Akron Zips in the horseshoe, and I was running down the opening kickoff, and I uh, was very nervous. But once you get the first hit, once you get the first kick, all is well. Well, he is a left-footed kicker, and he is about to make his collegiate debut. Cameron Carson. First action for UMass. Off the upright, no good. Well, that's kind of how this first half has been for the Minutemen. Really well done drive to give themselves a chance. Put them in position as you take a look at the kick. Just off that left upright. Sometimes those will doink in, but no good there. Well, Carson will have another opportunity at some point. Here it is, 28-0, Georgia Southern with the lead. Kevin and Jim Mora coming up. Guys, what you got for us? Welcome to the Nissan Halftime Report. Well, Bill, we've got huge news. Link TV brings us to Statesboro, Georgia. We are at halftime. Georgia Southern bidding for its 25th consecutive non-league home win. And Shy Wirtz is putting on a show for the fans here today, isn't he, Dustin? Yes, he is. He is doing it all. We talked about him in the open, what he can do with his legs. But today, doing it with his arm as well. Look at this guy. His ability to get upfield. He bursts so quickly and gets the top speed. He's just having himself a monster afternoon. This one was supposed to be a pass, naked bootleg, and just does a little dipsy do to the end zone, and then it's time to play a little tunes as they've got the guitar on the sideline when they celebrate a great touchdown drive. It's been a pretty dominant performance by the Eagles this afternoon. It all works, very efficient, eight of nine, 107 yards, and the four total touchdowns as you saw the touchdown run. And for UMass, you see 67 yards and you say, Boy, that's not, not very great. But they got most of those yards on the last drive, which is something I think they can build off of here in the second half as they're going to get the football. Second half underway and looking up into the sun, the short kick and Powell will reverse field. This is Johnson and Jermaine Johnson gets out to the 30-yard line. Well, that's a good kickoff return as well. Two in a row for him. Yeah, they call him OC, his nickname. O.C. Johnson, that, that was a really well done return because he was about to get stopped at about the 15-yard line, and he, his little pivot, shifts out, spin move, 
and finds himself at the 31 yard line and much better starting field position here for this UMass offense. And I, I really do think, Bill, at the end of that first half, UMass got something going. I'm not saying they're going to come back and win the game, but boy, they look like somewhat in sync and they got themselves an opportunity to attempt a field goal. Just a bad break with the, the kick off the, uh, the goal post. And Powell in his first start has been very poised back there. Would you agree? I would. And a slant thrown behind and intercepted on the deflection by Canteen. There is the first turnover of the day by UMass and Canteen is still coming. And finally knocked down on the 20. Well, it wasn't a well-thrown ball, but it should have been caught nonetheless. It was a little high, but this, this pass by Embolus should be caught. It's a quick slant. He's got his target. Again, a little high, but you get two hands on it. As, as a Division I wide receiver, you got to catch those. You do. And I'm sure he wishes he had that one back because you know, even if you drop that, but he kind of tips it up and allows the defender to, to make the interception. And then Canteen's just showing what he does best. He's, he's learning. He's growing and becoming a much better corner. That was a great play. And the 33-yard return sets him up in the red zone to start the third quarter. And here comes Wirtz. Oh, and he's dragged down on the horse collar from the backside, and that will be the penalty on the Will side linebacker, Mike Ruin. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 33. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. It's only the second UMass penalty of the day, but clearly the right call there, right? Yeah, and that's a play that scares you if you're Chad Lunsford because you know, that's the, the old T.O. play, right, when you're dragging a guy down from behind, and that's why they have that rule because you, you are concerned for injuries and the, the safety of players, and that's one that kind of has you holding your breath in a game that you kind of already have in hand. The last thing that Georgia Southern needs at this point is to lose number one. No, huh? goodness. Here's King, and he gets to the five. You know, I know this game's 28-0, Bill, and that's a game that, you know, that's a score where you, you still potentially could come back from. You get the sense the way this game has flowed and looking at UMass' first game of the season, and, and they're in a tough spot. You know, playing a game, coming down here, 17 days of practice, 28 kind of feels like 50 right now, right? So I'm sure that Coach Lunsford's going to monitor this. You definitely don't want to lose anybody in a game that you, you pretty much have control of. Words from the five. He's already tied a career high with three touchdown passes. That was nearly a fourth, but it was broken up nicely by Wallace. He's the quarterback on that side, and he got his hand in there to knock it away from Najee Thompson. Yeah, Wallace is, is a pretty good player. They like him a lot. Got some experience. Started eight games last season. In fact, uh, on the road, had a intercept interception against the Big Ten foe in Northwestern, which is a, a big play for, for UMass. And now coming back this year, that's a really well done play. Ball's thrown a little high, but he does a good job getting his hands on the ball and knocking it down. Passing situation now on third and goal for Wirtz, and they did not get this play off. It appears Whistle stopped the play before the snap. Ball starts off and number 51. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Aaron Dowdell, the left guard, called for the penalty, and that will make it a third and goal on the 10, and that might make it a little easier, to be quite honest, no? Well, if you're going to throw the rock, then it gives you a little bit more time and backs you out of there. If you were thinking about running it, play call changes now. I'm guessing Shy Wirtz something midline, move him out of the pocket, give him a couple different routes on different levels. Where's the tight end? Bo Johnson has caught two passes already today for touchdowns. Tight end in motion. He goes in motion. Wirtz throws it behind the intended receiver, and it's incomplete. He tried to get Kennedy on the crossing route. And so they misfire in the red zone here, a penalty and a drop. Well, pretty impressive job by UMass. Mm -hmm. That's twice now in the game where they've got off the field. Once was a turnover by Shy Wirtz in the first quarter. And now here on a third and ten, you get good pressure and pass nearly picked off 
by Powell, and you force a field goal. I think that's a, a victory for this UMass defense. It's going to be a 27-yard attempt for Alex Rayner, Georgia Southern kicker. And he knocks that one through. And so the touchdown is avoided. The turnover does not lead to the touchdown, but it makes it a 31-0 game. Like I said, I, I thought a pretty good job by the Minutemen defense right there. You're, you're put in a tough spot. You come out of halftime. Your offense, the very first play, you know, throws a, a pick down to the, you know, inside the red zone, and then you have to come out there, sudden change, and you bow up, and you hold them to a field goal. That, that's that's as good as you can get. It's all you can ask for a defense to put in that situation. Well, kick off your week six NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. Tomorrow, we'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game leading right up to kickoff. It's tomorrow, 10 a.m. A big one there in Pittsburgh tomorrow afternoon. Oh, I know. The 4 0 Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Dare I say 4-1 Cleveland Browns? Should be a good one. A lot of good games this weekend. Of course, that Monday night game, looking forward to that. Cardinals and Cowboys. Should be a fun Sunday and Monday night. Dylan Lewis is going to kick off this time for Georgia Southern. High and short. Fair catch called for, and they got a ticket at the 29-yard line. You're going to give uh, UMass some pretty good field position here. I think that's just something they're trying to work on now in a game like this, just the pooch kick. Or do you think it was because the last kick return nearly went the distance? Maybe they did. Yeah. Okay. Just something else. Yeah, another wrinkle. Well, something else for the Coastal Carolina coaches to look at because that's the game that's next yeah, year. And that is a huge game. And they'll be a, ranked. A red-hot Coastal team will come in here. Conference play resumes for Georgia Southern here next week. Well, you were in Myrtle Beach a couple weeks ago. Saw them uh, handily beat Arkansas State. They look really good. They've got a young quarterback, a redshirt freshman that's dynamite. Bump. Ball was loose, but it was covered by UMass. I think Coastal's legit. Yes. Sun Belt, you do. After seeing them in live in person and watching them against Louisiana the other night on ESPN, I was impressed. Very impressed with the job they've done there. The Chanticleers. One of the great college football nicknames. It is. Yeah, that, the division is uh, wide open for sure. Here is Merriweather after the three-yard loss when the ball was put on the ground. He got a yard or so of it back. You know he wants to get going a little bit here and show what he can do. Ellis Merriweather is a guy that they're so excited about. And he put up big numbers in suburban Atlanta at Alpharetta High School. Just hasn't had any room behind that O-line today. He will eventually. Bill, as, as this offensive line starts to gel together, you know, remember, this is the first time this offensive line has played together. But they only had five scholarship offensive linemen on the roster last year. Fallon on third down dumps it off to Jared Cole. And he gets to near the 35-yard line. Shy of the first down, and UMass will have to punt it away. Getting a lot of guys experience in this game. Cole, a true freshman out of Virginia. Three-star recruit. Rush for Well, when you look at this roster for UMass, you see a lot of guys from the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And that goes back to this staff's ability to recruit in Maryland because yeah. that's where Walt was. That's correct. A lot of seeds have been planted there in the D.C. area. George Georgiopoulos. That's a good one. With another punt. George has not gotten a roll today, has he? <laughs> Out of bounds on the 27-yard line. Back to Coastal Georgia in a moment. Ox Papa John. 
Well, when twilight shadows deepen and the study hour draws nigh, when shades of night are falling and the evening breezes sigh, UMass finds itself in a deep hole at the moment. 31-0 the score here in Statesboro on this Saturday afternoon. Georgia Southern's offense back on the field on the 27th. And Wirtz on a collision. Oh, what a hit. No flag thrown there. And a tremendous job to hold on to the ball by Murray. And that was Powell who delivered the hit. Powell made a pow on that play. That he was did. a big time hit by Terray Powell. Are they going to look at this? I think they are. Uh, Maybe not. Well, they okay. stopped the play right before the snap. Okay. Now they're going to move the sticks is what their their issue is here. He got the first down in, in the the one side of the field said second down. And now they got it right. There we go. Now maybe they buzz down. The previous play is under video review for targeting. Well, we've already had one player ejected from today's game for targeting. Now we will see if the freshman Powell, if his hit on Malik Murray was legit. That angle you can't tell. Looks like his head was in front. I, I can't believe Murray hung on to that pass. There's the real time look. I don't think that's targeting Bill. I think he, I, I think he I think it's shoulder, head in front. I think because the receiver's head kind of snapped back a little bit, it looked like more vicious. I agree with you. I think the other thing is Murray is in the air when he gets hit. Yeah. So he's going to fly a little bit too. Right. It looked like in real time it just looked vicious. Well, the crown of the helmet was not involved whatsoever. He didn't launch himself. He just ran right well, through the receiver. There's so kind of a launch. There's kind of a launch there. Would you take a look at the rules? Dangerous hit that involves, as you mentioned, launching. Upward thrust, severe strike. That's a... Indicator, as they call it. So we'll see. What do you think, Bill? I'm going to say... I, I've guessed on these a million times. And? What's your percentage? 50%. After video review, there's no targeting on the play. It was a catch for a first down. I think they got the call right. There was a slight launch, but the, the head was in front. And again, it's a subjective call. I'm going to say nice job by Powell, delivered a nice hit, and a really good job by Murray to hold on to the ball for the catch. And everyone's okay, and we play on. From the 37-yard line, it's another completion, by the way, for Shai Wirtz, who's having one of his best days as a passer. Murray again, and he's ahead to the 41-yard line. That's Murray's fourth catch of the day. He's averaging over 21 yards of reception. He had a 47-yard touchdown in the first quarter to get things going for Georgia Southern. You have a legal participation here, I think. No flag is thrown. Wirtz is able to connect it this time to the receiver. Just near the first down marker. What would you see? Boy, there was about three defensive linemen running off the field. They were on the field at the snap. I don't know if the officials missed it, but there definitely were more than 11 guys. Here's Wirtz, gets out of trouble, and then slides back to the initial line of scrimmage. They are playing super fast, are they not? We've seen them yeah. run the option. We've seen them use the bobsled formation for Bob DeBess. We've seen a lot of everything today from Wirtz. Now he throws it on the run, and it's incomplete. Smith, the intended receiver, and again, Wallace had the coverage on the play. I, I must say, after 
you know, the first half, the defense for UMass really seems to kind of be settling in here and playing with a little bit more confidence. I think their pass rush is doing a better job uh, creating, you know, making Wurtz get outside the pocket. Coverage in the back end was, was well done right there on that last play. And now you, you put Georgia Southern into a third and uh, ten. Third and long. Well, you know, they probably were not happy with the way they played in the first half. Not. They know they can be better. Well, their offense did them no favors as well, keeping them out there with all the three and outs. Third and ten. Wurtz has a good pocket. Misfires, but he did get hit again. Oh, he got crushed. Big hit. Well, a helmet comes off, so then I think that was uh, Billy Wooden right there. Big old number 42 in the middle at 310 pounds has a free rush. And I'm guessing Coach Lunsford doesn't like that. The fact that his star quarterback now has taken a big hit and also had a horse collar that was not good on him, I should say. So uh, you force a punt. Good job by UMass to start the second half, put it in a tough spot. They force a field goal in the red zone. And now here force a punt of Georgia Southern. Here is the punt return. They've done a nice job on this kick return, but we do have a penalty marker thrown on the play. You're going to get a hold here. Tanner Davis, who is in right on the wall side of the punt return, was really holding up a coverage man for Georgia Southern. 38 should be the number, I believe. And so the officials will huddle up and figure it out. It has been, all things considered, a clean game for Walt. You know, they haven't had a lot yeah. of substitution penalties. You know, they've been they're getting beat on the scoreboard, so to speak. Sure. But he was really concerned about kicking game, really concerned about kick coverage. They've done a pretty good job in that. They haven't had many penalties. Outside of the one um, kind of Bill Roth tee shot on the first punt, that he doinked off the side of his foot. I'm we we at I, top I, I, golf, I, yeah, in whatever way. city that was. Uh, we gotta, certainly showed my ability to master the your, doink. Slow down your swing, Billy. Slow it down. There were two fouls by the receiving team. Illegal substitution. There were more than twelve, more than eleven players on the field at the snap. That penalty is declined. During the return, holding number thirty-three, ten-yard penalty, first down. Well, he was concerned about penalties like that, and Chad's going to say push him back. We'll take the second penalty. What do you see here, Dustin? Well, take a look right here. Yeah, just grabbing the jersey. I couldn't tell. I thought it was 38 from up here, but it, they called 33. Nonetheless, you saw the whole very obvious, easy call to bring back, which was a pretty good return. You know, MLS gets out there and, you know, could have given them some better field position. I want to see if UMass can put together a drive here, Bill. Can they get some points on the board? The problem is, is that they have had really poor field position today. And All that day. continues. They have had seemingly drive start after drive start inside their own 20. This one on the 13 for Mike Fallon. Try to set up the little screen to the right side to Emelis. And it's defended well. It did get ahead to, oh, about the 16-yard line. LaRoche came in to make the play. He's done a nice job as usual today. It doesn't just seem, Southern. Bill, like UMass is just trying so hard to get three yards on a play. I mean, they throw it out there. It, it, it looks like it's blocked well. Passes a little high, and you still only get three yards out of it. From the 17, they'll call it the 16, second and seven. Fallon, the play fake, and he dumps it short to his tight end, Taylor Edwards. I think they need to do more of that. If they're going to continue to try and ground and pound this running attack, the play action passes, that's what you know, good, good running teams do. They get all those guys piled in the box, and then you get Fallon, who appears to me to be pretty agile, pretty mobile. Get him out, let him roll, and 
give them some options. Give them a couple of crossing routes on different levels and make the defense adjust and play, and play that zone coverage. Third and three now for, uh, from the 20. Let's see if Fallon and UMass can move the sticks. Here comes the blitz, and it's incomplete. Well, they set the heat that time, and they'll force the punt for the UMass team once again. Trying to get Taylor Edwards there. He sat down right at the first down stick. And it was a fastball. It had to come out hot because you're right. He definitely had pressure coming up the, up the middle. So we do it again. It's they been look, a busy day for George Georgopoulos. <laughs> They've only crossed midfield one time today. And they had a field goal attempt at the end of the first half that hit the upright. Kennedy calls for the fair catch and takes it near his 40-yard line. And Georgia Southern will take over midway through the third here in Statesboro. All Georgia Southern today, 31-0 on its home field midway through the third quarter. Let's take a look at today's Colors of Tradition brought to you by Sherwin-Williams. You know, here at Georgia Southern, one of the great traditions, the yellow school buses, two of them that the team still uses today. Back in 1981, the team needed a way to get to practice and to games, and the Bullock County Board of Education stepped in and said, we'll let you have a couple of buses, one dollar each to lease them. They can't refuse that deal, and they still use them today. One of the great traditions here at Georgia Southern, the yellow school bus that is parked right outside the field house behind the goal posts to our left. Can't get anything for a dollar these days. That's a good deal. Eagles will start on their 40. And Wirtz slides ahead. Got about five yards on the play. You wonder if coach on the sidelines he said, hey, start sliding a little bit more. We don't need you to take any unforced hits. You don't have to in this game. Up 31-0 late in the third quarter. Well, Billy Wood landed on him on his last play, and Billy's over 300 pounds. And again, the games that are coming up for Chad and this team, right, starting next week, they are hosting an outstanding football team here next week in Coastal Carolina. They still have App State to play. Their big rival. That game will be here. South Alabama, Troy. They run a cute little reverse to Wesley Kennedy. And lots of grass in front of him. And Wesley Kennedy will score. There wasn't a Minuteman, Minuteman defender within, I don't know, 20 yards. Great, great illusion by Shy Wirtz there on that little end around. And Kennedy shows off that speed. He is really, really fast. Remember, he came to Georgia Southern as a wide receiver. So he does still a little bit of that on the edge, but playing a lot more running back now. But great play call. And I'm guessing that might be it for Shy Wurtz and company this afternoon. This afternoon. And here's our numbers, right? Come into this game, we talked to the coaching staff. They wanted eight explosive plays. What those are is a run of 12 or more, a pass of 15 or more. Today they've gotten 10 midway through the third quarter. Play the guitar, Mr. Kennedy. So you might say to yourself, why run that kind of play? Why would you do that? Well, they, set well, him, they set him up for it because they've been doing all that misdirection, and they think that every time Shywartz, you know, fakes off that midline, that he's either going to hand it off or he's going right. to pull it out of the mesh point, and then he's going to take off around the edge. Well, everybody on UMass thinks, okay, Shywartz didn't hand it off. Well, then he's definitely going to be going off to the right side. The entire defense flows to that side and Kennedy comes out, it's naked, so there's no one else out really out there to block but another wide receiver, and he's just home free. It also means that those Coastal Carolina defensive coaches have one more thing to remind their kids in practice next week Bill, about, you know right? What they, you know what they call those things? 
Just a little wrinkle. Just another wrinkle to have to put on that scouting, you know, card in practice. One more thing to prepare for. Right. Fair catch called for, and they'll take it on the 28-yard line as Taylor Edwards called for the fair catch. When college football is watched, Nacho's party packs bring the fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Student section lives. Learn more at livemystudentsection.com. 6.39 to go in the third. UMass looking for its first points of the game. This will be some of their better field position to start a drive. They're going to start uh, on their own 28. Down, skipping team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. On the 35. So here's what happens. Great teaching moment for any kid at home or at high school, college, NFL, what have you, right? So O.C. Johnson, number 10, watch what he does here. If he puts... It, if he puts his foot on the end line as he catches the ball, and he puts one foot out of bounds, one foot in bounds, and then he touches the ball, the kick is out of kick bounds. Kick is out of bounds. Right. So it's a great, smart play by O.C. Johnson. Got him some extra yardage. Josiah Johnson in the game at quarterback. He played one snap in the first half. He got ahead for a couple here, actually ahead to the 40-yard line. He got about five yards on it. Let's go back and revisit that. So you're saying if you're a kick returner. Yeah. And if you can put one foot out of bounds and catch the ball in the yes. air, it's you, a penalty on the kick. If you team. touch that ball with one foot out of bounds, the ball is out of bounds. It's like he kicked it out of bounds. So I, I, I love that uh, that awareness there from O.C. Johnson. Here's a quick throw to O.C. He makes the catch. Fights for the first down. So Josiah Johnson now in at quarterback. I'm guessing at some point... He's going to make a lot of plays. Here, let's go back to the kickoff. This is what I'm talking about. So watch his left foot. If he simultaneously catches that ball while foot is on that end line, you take a look at it right there, that's a flag. The sideline. Get a foot on the white and a foot on the green, catch the ball, it's a penalty. Good awareness. Another new quarterback, it is Will Koch. His first snap, and Koch... A refreshing run across to the 47-yard line. He took a little bit of a late hit. No flag on the play. Koch is a pro-style quarterback out of Niceville, Florida, up in the panhandle. He was in for one snap, and Johnson will come back in. So, coming into the game, we had no idea who was going to be the quarterback for UMass, and as it turned out, now all three have played at least one snap. Yeah, and Andrew Brito, who's listed as the fourth-string quarterback, was the starter all last season. After the gain of eight by Koch, Johnson back in, and number 16 flips the pass to the tight end, Edwards, and he's ahead to about the 46-yard line. It'll be shy of the first down, but a makeable third down now for UMass. Absolutely, and, and they finally crossed the midfield line for the second time in the game, so maybe a little spark here by putting Josiah Johnson in the football game. Coach Walt Bell said to us on our call this week, Billy, that Josiah Johnson is probably the best all-around athlete on the entire squad. And they'll play him all over the place. And right now they're using him as a quarterback. Good protection for Johnson, but he overshoots his intended receiver, Samuel Emelis. And it's going to be fourth down and three. But at this point, you likely go for it, no? What do you have to lose? I mean, it's 31, not 38, nothing, excuse me. And you know, that's why in that situation, maybe you do decide to take that throw in third and three. Because you know you're, you've got two chances here to, to pick up the fourth and, fourth and three now. Fourth down from the 46. Johnson stumbled a little bit, made the throw, and it's Hill with the one-handed reception. He's got the first down. What a catch by Hill on the outside. Are you kidding me? He's falling down. Johnson barely gets it off. He stumbles there, falling backwards, and then he does a little Odell Beckham Jr. One hand that a spin, dipsy do in bounds. What a play. Concentration by Melvin Hill. He was just a special teams player a season ago. Played all 12 games, but didn't really see a lot of snaps. Didn't record a stat as a wide receiver. Gets a chance here to make a play and makes a big one on fourth and three.
from the 34. A play fake for Johnson. He's hit as he throws, and that is going to be intercepted. Did Bird hang on? I think he dropped it. I think it hit the ground. I do, too. They call it an interception at the moment. But we will take a look. Did Bird hang on to that? I, I think it hit the ground, yeah. I, I saw it from up here, Bill. He tries. It's an easy interception, and he goes to try and come, come down with the ball. You see it hit the ground. Watch to see if he hit the. Yep, incomplete. This will be the best look. No yes, doubt, sir. No doubt about it. That's a break for UMass. You think Bird will hear about that in the team meetings? Though? I think that uh, his teammates will let him hear more about it than his coaches will. If you know what I'm saying. Second down from the 34-yard line for Josiah Johnson. Hands it off to Merriweather, and that's the back that they wanted to see. Look at him stay on his feet. They're going to roll him down, but you can see like a freight train rolling down the tracks out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Merriweather is going to be a fine, fine addition to this UMass offense. Once they get him rolling behind that big offensive line, let's see if he was down. Good cut there in the hole. Then a spin. His elbow is, yeah, his yeah. forearm is down, but... I do like the awareness by him to, to continue to play throughout the down. And, and he is down there, a little short of the first down. But again, this is probably in, in a real situation, the best drive this offense has had outside of the two minute drill. Snaps a bit low. Johnson flips it, and that one is intercepted. Sam Kennerson, the free safety. Kind of read the eyes of Josiah Johnson for the pick. Boy, he had Pilata wide open. If he just puts another six inches on this pass, Pilata would be walking into the end zone. Instead, got another turnover in the red zone. The Eagles are rolling in Statesboro. Papa John's. Georgia Southern forces its second turnover of the game. They still got that goose egg next to UMass. 38-0 here in Statesboro, late in quarter number three. Where it stays in the ball game, they take over on their own 10-yard line. Lights are on as dusk sets here in Georgia. Nice job to stay on his feet by King. Good balance there, and he's head to about the 14-yard line. Got an injured Minuteman down. So while they tend to the injured player, we should point out that that's something that Coach Bell was really concerned about. We, are we going to get worn down? We haven't played. We really haven't had a whole lot of scrimmages. Am I going to get guys banged up later in the game? Well, it's always a concern as you start a season, and when you've had not a lot of time to prepare for this game, you want to see what happens here as you go. But remember, this is the only game on the schedule. Glad to see the young man up. That is number 38. Tanner, Tanner Davis. Davis. Free safety. There you go. Out of Cheshire, Connecticut. While this is the only game that's officially on the UMass schedule, there will be more coming. Now, we don't know who they are, right? They're talking with teams. They don't know who they are. But they've gotten some phone calls. Yeah. There's hey, we need a game. We think we're going to need one. You gotta think about that, how difficult that must be to adapt, not just for the coaching staff, but for the players to practice, not knowing who you're gonna play, when you're gonna play, if you're gonna play. It takes some determination. Little flip to Darius Lewis. And that was defended well by UMass, so it'll bring up third down. Yeah, this season is so unusual yeah. that you, as a coach, don't have control over things that you ordinarily control. You've got to be able to add lib and adjust. Wake up, wake up. 
That was a nice job by Ruin, the Will linebacker, to make the tackle. I don't think we'll see it in college basketball this year, too, right? There's going to be a schedule that is released, yeah. and then it may not look anything like the schedule that you actually play. How many schedules have we seen from these conferences? <laughs> I like, know. We've had three Big Ten schedules. Wirtz going to try to pick this up with his legs, and he has the first down ahead of the 23-yard line. He is nifty. He is shifty. He exactly runs this thing like a conductor at an orchestra. Knows exactly what to do with the football. Yeah, just that little hesitation makes the defense pause for just a second. Right here. Pause and take off. Let your lineman get downfield. The blocker's out in front of you. Make a man miss. It seems like Wirtz never goes down on the first contact. And that's a great sign of a, ter a terrific running back. He's a quarterback, by the way, playing like a running back. This is LaRoche. Good tackle by Josh Wallace on the edge. LaRoche Second big tackle for yeah. him today. LaRoche looked like he was going to kind of put the burners on there down the sideline, and all of a sudden out of nowhere comes number 12, Josh Wallace, and knifes him down. That'll bring us to the end of the third. Speedy LaRoche with the carry. It's been all Georgia Southern today here in Statesboro. Hawks, Papa John's. Football presented by Sling TV. We go to the fourth quarter here in Statesboro, Georgia, and the home team, the Georgia Southern Eagles, with the big lead over visiting Massachusetts. Bill Roth, Dustin Fox here on this Saturday afternoon. We are looking forward to next Saturday as well. Big Ten football is back. Michigan at Minnesota next Saturday at 7.30 on ABC. <laughs> to the fourth quarter we go. And Justin Tomlin is the new quarterback for Georgia Southern, giving... Shy Wirtz a breather, a well-deserved breather. Tomlin's out of Decatur, Georgia. South went to Cab High School. He's a sophomore here. I watched him in the pregame warm-ups. You know, it's funny. Execute so well, that option, yeah. even in warm-ups, don't they? They almost look like they're uh, like synchronized swimmers or something. They're just doing everything in motion, and they practice it. It's repetition time and time again as you get a flag here, maybe a timeout. Well, there is both. There is a flag on the field, and Coach Lunsford called timeout as well. We'll figure it out early in the fourth. Back after this. Well, Justin Tomlin will be the quarterback here in the uh, fourth quarter for Georgia Southern. You know, he hasn't had an opportunity to get any significant action this year because all of Georgia Southern's games have come down to the final minute. Yeah, good point. There's been no opportunities like this game to get your backups in and let them get some of those reps. And certainly since uh, Shy Wirtz has been the starting quarterback for you know, the last four years, there have not been a lot of chances for backups. They run the ball to Logan Wright, and he has the first down. So even on third and five, they get yet another explosive running play ahead of the 41-yard line. Wright is from Jacksonville, redshirt junior tailback. Gets the edge there. Good job by the left tackle. Really just kind of sealing that edge and allowing Logan Wright to use his speed to pick up the first down. Tomlin hands it off again to Wright. And he gets ahead for a couple. It is still unusual, even for long-standing Georgia Southern fans, and even for those of us that have just watched a lot of games that have played on this field, to see this team wearing the white jerseys <laughs> on this field. I, if you didn't join us yeah. earlier, Georgia Southern is wearing its road uniforms, white on white today, at the request of UMass, because their, their road jerseys didn't come in in time for the game. Doing them a solid. I mean, they didn't have uniforms to wear, so they said... We'll make the switch. I kind of like the look. It's a little change up. LSU wears white at home, right? Dallas Cowboys yeah. wear white at home. This is the first time Georgia Southern's done it. Tomlin goes down near the 42-yard line. Let's go to the studio once again and say hi to Kevin. Hey, Bill, let's take a look at this Fansville studio update as we take you to Fayetteville. 
catch of the day, maybe the catch of the year candidate here, Felipe Franks, to Traylon Burks. It does not get any better than that. They'd review it. Maybe the officials wanted to see if this beauty actually stood. They got to see it a few more times, and it does. It's a touchdown. 26-14, Arkansas. Back to Bill. Ooh, who picks Suey? What do you think of that catch, Dustin? Unbelievable. That's a sports That's center to top see. 10, right? that that was great while we were gone they uh reviewed a play here First foul illegal block below the waist offense number 58 15 yard penalty replay second down okay so we had an illegal block on that option play on georgia southern hey aaron pyron who's in there at left guard as a backup you know th those calls happen a lot if you watch a lot of the uh, Military Academies play, the triple option attack, because those linemen, they get in space and they go low, and you can't have those those high-low blocks. And uh, there's they happen quite frequently in these types of offenses. And if you're a backup and you're not used to running it all the time, those things happen. Here's Tomlin out of the gun, and they're going to keep it on the ground to Matt Speedy LaRoche. He gets a couple. You know, you want to continue to get your backups some valuable playing time, but at the same time, you don't think that they're going to be throwing the ball a whole lot here. In fact, I would not be surprised that they don't throw at all, except maybe on this third and very long play. I would give him an opportunity to throw something down the field. He's not going to get many of these this season, you, do, you wouldn't think. I don't think it's a sportsmanship thing if you do it. you still got to get some reps for your quarterback. You think that this would have been a much different type of game had UMass played one game before that, don't you? I really do, especially watching this team in the second half. Their defense specifically, I think after they got in at halftime, kind of settled down, I think they looked like a different team. You know, I did the Tulane-South Alabama game early in the season. You know, uh, South Alabama had played one game against Southern Miss. So coming into that game, Tulane had not played and South Alabama did. I thought Tulane looked gassed, very similar to what the Minutemen did in the first half. And they come out, the next couple games look a lot better. So we'll see. We'll talk more about this on the other side. Punt coming up for Georgia Southern after the break. Ox, Papa John's. College football is presented by Sling TV, the smart choice for live TV. Georgia Southern won six NCAA National Championships in one of the late football. That's what it was called back then, starting with the great Irv Russell, culminating with Paul Johnson, of course, who then uh, moved on to Georgia Tech. Great tradition here in Statesboro, Georgia. Bill Roth, Dustin Fox with you on this Saturday afternoon, a game that no one thought would be played. We didn't know this was even a possibility until 10 days ago when Appalachian State had to postpone its game here scheduled for this week. Oh, Georgia Southern was going to fake a punt. No, I don't think they were going to fake it. I think <laughs> they, they just caught the rush team off sides, and the punter actually threw a pretty pass down the right sideline <laughs> to his gunner. Because you got a free play? Yeah. Smart. Smart play. Anthony Outside, Beck is the punter. Defense, number 29, jumped in the neutral zone and caused an offensive play to react. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So now instead of fourth and seven, it will be fourth and two. Hill was the guy. Can't imagine they're going to go for this. <laughs> They'll just keep the punt unit out there. And Beck with his first punt. Pretty one. Really nice. Should have let that one go. Fair catch on the four. And that's where they'll start. All right, let's take a closer look at the offensive line now for Georgia Southern with pocket protection brought to you by Nationwide. I love this next play you're going to see as the offensive line just watch them just build the pocket for Shy Wirtz as the play goes. Pulls out a little bit to his right. Just look at this. All day to throw. Just sit back there. Oh, just, just wait for a few minutes. And 
nice little easy touchdown throw to Bo Johnson in the first half. Great job by the offensive line, Brian Miller, Aaron Dowdo, Logan Langemeyer, Caleb Kelly, Drew Wilson, the old the old, head, the, the old head on the offensive line. Yeah, they did a good job for Shy Wards today. Tied yeah. his career high with three touchdown passes all in the first half. They ran for a fourth as well. So the penalty on the punt, half the distance to the goal, so the ball goes from the six back to the three. That is where Josiah Johnson and the UMass Minutemen will start. Another drive starting deep in UMass territory. This has been the story of the day for field position. Running it on first and down, and that is Ellis Merriweather. That's his 13th carry of the day. They've held him to 16 yards. It's been tough sled for Merriweather in the, the backfield for UMass. They came into the game really wanting to get him going. We thought maybe 30 carries, but because just the lack of production and lack of really plays, they haven't had that many opportunities. They give it to him again. Georgia Southern again. They're winning the battles up front. That was Parker Devine out of Jacksonville, Florida that brought Merriweather down. How frustrating it must be to be Merriweather getting all these carries and you're just, I mean, you're getting hit one yard after you get the football. And it's just been such a struggle to get anything going. Now here you are, third and nine, backed up, shadows of your goalpost, and you're, you're forced to throw here with Josiah. Johnson now in at quarterback, so let's see what he's got. Johnson lets it go and delivers it on the money for the first down ahead to the 23 yard line. That's Zamar Weiss who came back to make the grab. He's a freshman from yeah. Newark. That's his first collegiate catch. And Milford shows some ability right there, the three-star recruit out of Milford Academy. You know, he was a, a running back, a wide receiver, and played quarterback in high school. Pretty impressive catch right there. And a great throw by Johnson. That was a good throw. Out of the end zone. First down pass now for him. Hit as he throws, and he dumps it off the wise again. Wise now getting involved in this offense here with Johnson. Bill, how many freshmen have we seen on this roster? This has to be, if not the youngest roster in college football, at least top five. I mean, they're, they're playing their entire roster. If you look across, guys are all playing their first game. Yes, 19, 19 on that two deep slash three deep that they put out for this game today. Second down, and we'll call it nine for Josiah Johnson. Got a blitz coming. He gets out of there. He's got room to run. Tried to stiff on the linebacker, and, oh, he paid for it, didn't he? Yeah. And I'm, Say I'm, hello I'm, to Reynard Ellis. He went with a stiff arm, and Ellis said, welcome to Statesboro. And Ellis kind of does a little WWE move here as he yeah. as he picks him up. Watch this. A little, little, bam, a little pile driver as he goes into the sideline. But I like the decision by Johnson. He's, he recognized the blitz coming off his right side. He knew he had a... A little bit of a seam to step up in and gives him a chance here now to pick up this third down. Merriweather on third and two picks up the first down ahead to the 34-yard line. A third down conversion for the first time today. They had been 0 for 9. Midway through the fourth quarter, UMass trying to avoid the shutout here on the road. Merriweather dragged down. It has been really tough for him. I'm going to be watching this young man very closely too. this season. Yes, sir. And future seasons as well next year for him. Just to see how he plays and how they use him. Well, he's a good-looking running back, though. You know, he originally committed the Navy. He's got a good yeah. athletic family. Yeah. His dad was a college athlete, played basketball, Division I. Hey, it's an offense that you'd want to play, and if you're a big physical back, 
you want to go somewhere where, hey, man, you're, you're going to get the ball 20 times? It's just going to take them some time to develop this offensive line. You know, they've, they've already put the weight on, but they've got to develop and, and mesh together. Now they, they have more scholarship offensive linemen on the roster. First man was covered, so Johnson gets out of there with it. Got ahead for a couple of yards, ahead to about the 37-yard line before Watkins hauls him down. It's just impressive, Bill, that they were able to just get out of their own, basically their end zone. They were in the end zone, yeah. He was taking snaps out of the end zone. Now they've got a couple nice conversions and We'll see if they can convert again here on third down. The last one was a great throw from Josiah Johnson. Third and seven on the 36. Can Johnson deliver again? Yes, but shy of the first down. And so will be fourth down. You know, Johnson's a product of the bowl school over in the uh, Jacksonville. That school's turned out so many really good players in all sports. NFL, Major League Baseball, LPGA golfers. Chipper Jones was the great shortstop from Bowles. Johnson will have his day. It'll be interesting to see what they do with him and Fallon and uh, Will Koch, who's a who's the freshman who came in He's earlier today. He's probably the future, don't you think, Bill, of this UMass football team? He's the Kind of the prized recruit. Here is Hood on the punt return, and Hood has fresh legs, and Hood is on the move. Tries to cut back, and they wrestle him out of bounds near the 22-yard line. Caleb Hood out of McDonough, Georgia, sends us to break with an explosive punt return. Georgia Southern on the move here on their home field. The second ranked featherweight contender takes on the Korean Zombie, the number four contender in the main event. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the app. Dustin, I know you follow this. The Korean Zombie 16 and 5 yeah, in his good. career. He's pretty good. Under five minutes to go. That's Gerald Green. The freshman from Columbus, Georgia, with the carry. They're down inside the red zone again. Man, they have run so many plays inside the 20, haven't they? Uh, they certainly have. I, I would say that I've been impressed that the defense has been able to kind of bow up the last couple times in the red zone, but... When you've got Shy Wartz at quarterback, there's not much you can do. There's Green, and he runs ahead. They'll mark him down to the 13-yard line as we turn under four minutes to go. Let's go to the studio once again to Kevin. And, Bill, is as we expected, UCF in Memphis has been a shootout. Check this out. Dylan Gabriel to Ryan O'Keefe. And O'Keefe does the heavy lifting, 93 yards, longest completion in school history. Gabriel also has an 85-yard touchdown pass, 497 yards on the game, 43-37, UCF on top. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, that had shootout written all over it, didn't it? Yes, it did. Tomlin fakes the handoff. Is he going to throw? No, he's going to try to run, but it's defended exceptionally well by Kubri. The senior captain, middle linebacker. That'll bring up fourth down. Take the field goal. Something you always want to work on. I mean, in a game like this, the operation of field goal in college some, sometimes can be a journey. Well, he hit one earlier, did Rayner from... He did. 27 yards out. He's four of five on the year. This will be a 31-yarder. The kicker from Kennesaw, Georgia. 
makes it 41-0 with 2.34 to go. Georgia Southern bidding for its 25th straight non-league win here today. 41-0, the Georgia Southern Eagles. And for these Eagles fans, beautiful faces, loud, empty places here today. Having the social distancing, yet the fans are able to make lots of noise, makes a difference, doesn't it? It certainly does, Bill. When you've got a stadium that holds 25, 30,000 fans, just having that 6,000 fans, in, in the way that they spread out the fans to the upper deck, all throughout the lower bowl, it really adds to the acoustics and gives the game more of a you know genuine college football feel and shout out to the fans that came and the students and the band the band by the way shout out to the georgia southern eagle marching band one of, one of the best bands i've seen hey let me tell you about the 1998 one championship game you umass fans know what i'm talking about the top ranked eagles were looking for another title right but marcel ship gave 11 seeded UMass an early 7-0 lead with this touchdown run. This was up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Then late in the second, Ship gets his second touchdown. It was 38-14 UMass. Eagles closed to 38-33, but then Ship added his third touchdown. Part of a 244-yard day, UMass wins the national championship. Greatest moment in UMass football history. Here is Will Coke taken off down the sidelines and he is wrestled out of bounds near midfield. So you know who's really happy that UMass football is back playing? Our colleague from ESPN, Rini Ingolia. That is correct. Did you see Coke run down the sideline? Good run. Yeah, Rini's a diehard UMass fan and alum and one of their all-time greats in the Hall of Fame, right? Big time. Big time running back for the Minutemen. Here goes Jared Cole running with the football. And you can sense in the final two minutes, now there's some backups in there. Georgia Southern, they want the shutout. They do. Every team wants a shutout. And UMass, they don't want to be shut out. So they're going to continue to fight for a minute 40 and try to go down here and get themselves on the board and give something to, you know, feel decent about as you get on the plane ride home. 90 seconds and counting. And Will Koch takes off running with the football and gets ahead for three or four on the play. College football is watched. Nachos party packs bring the fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Student section lives. Learn more at livemystudentsection.com. One minute to go and a couple of big plays coming up now for the young man from Okaloosa County, Florida. That's where Niceville is over there near Destin, one of the more scenic places in our country. He hands it off on third down with 46 seconds to go to Cole, and it's going to bring up a fourth down play. One more shot now for UMass, and it's rookie quarterback. That was Allen that made another defensive play. They don't have to take another snap, but they probably will. Why not? Take a shot to the end zone. With one second on the clock. This is just for film, Bill. I mean, they want to see what this guy's got in a real game. Let's see what Will Coke can do. Well, he got the first down and took a pretty good hit. And he'll get up, I hope. Well, he's going to remember his last play. That will do it. Well, congrats to UMass. They got a game in. They got it in. Everybody's happy. They got a little bit of football under their right. belt. Now and they congrats can... to Georgia Southern. They yes. get their 25th straight home win against non-conference. Fun one, partner. Our final score, Georgia Southern 41, UMass nothing. For Dustin Fox, I'm Bill Roth saying so long from Georgia. This has been a presentation of ESPN.